Hi, this is Dave Barnett from LZ Tactical Lighting with our latest video blog. Today we're talking about the Lumen Wars. You've probably noticed that with every new flashlight released to the market, it has higher and higher lumens than the one before it. We're going to talk about whether or not that's a good thing, whether that's good for the consumer, whether it's sound engineering practice. To understand how these things work, first we need to understand how an LED flashlight works. And every LED flashlight has an LED, or a light emitting diode. And this LED produces light when electrical current passes through it. And within certain engineering limits and parameters, the more electrical current that passes through the LED, the more light it produces. Now, all manufacturers shop in a common marketplace to procure their LEDs. So, for one manufacturer to produce more lumens, more output than the next, they must put more electrical current through the LEDs, and often pushing the limit to the extremes of what's safe, practical, and good engineering practice. Today, we've got a setup with uh, one of our LZ flashlights with an AVS head, and when it's normally on a Charlie body or a three cell body producing nine volts, it's gonna produce approximately, actually a little better than 900 lumens. And you might say, well, I know there's some flashlights on the market that produce even more output than that. And we're gonna show that this AVS head has the ability to produce quite a bit more output, and we'll talk about why we don't push it that hard. All right, what we have here is a portable integrating sphere which measures lumen output, and what would normally, what looks like an LZ AVS head, but what we've done here, we've taken out the normal AVS electronics, and we have hardwired straight to the LED onto a DC power supply. So I can adjust the amount of current flowing through this LED. But the LED and the lens and all, all that system is exactly as we have on our LZ Bravo and Charlie AVS models. Now normally we run an LZ Bravo at 650 lumens. If you put a three cell body on it, the AVS or automatic voltage sensing is going to know that it is on a three cell increase output to 900 lumens. And that would be right about here. So I'm going to turn on the power supply and it is set to run it like it would normally run on um, a three volt system on a Charlie body. It's gonna run just over 900 lumens. And the computer output here shows right at about uh, 935 it's running. Now this is the same LED that we normally have. And I'm gonna reach down to the power supply and turn this up. And you notice now we're well over 1,000. We're up to nearly 1,100. And I haven't changed anything but increasing the amount of current that's passing through the LED. Hopefully this short little demonstration has been helpful to show that the LED that we use in the LZ AVS heads has the potential to produce far more than the 900 lumens it's regulated at. And in fact, using this portable in integrating sphere and power supply, we drove it up to about 1,100 lumens, and in the laboratory, we've driven them harder than that. So you might ask, well, why then do you make it a 1,100 lumen flashlight rather than the 900 lumens that it's rated at? Well, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And if you're concerned about reliability, durability, and even safety, you need to make sure that you've got margins of safety in all of these electrical circuits, not pushing components to their absolute maximum to try to squeeze out the highest lumen rating so that your marketing can be more impressive than the next competitor. Hopefully this video blog has been helpful. For more information, including why some of these high output flashlights tend to have a bluish looking tint, check out our written blog at lzeta.com. Also, subscribe to our channel. We've got more video blogs to come. Thanks for watching.